In this video, I'd like to show you an amazing little hack that you can do to modify the behavior of Ableton Live. Uh, the outcome of which is you get this extra button in the show hide options, which when you select this, shows you a list of all the devices that you've got loaded onto each track, both plugin devices and native Ableton Live devices. So it serves as a really quick reference to show you what you've got loaded onto each track. You can also directly select for example, there we go, selected the Tal Dub uh, delay on the Stab Synth track. I can activate and deactivate devices quickly. And in fact, I can highlight, backspace, get rid of them. Like that. So you might ask why I didn't Ableton um, include this in live anyway? And I think it's probably because there's a little glitch in there which if I just command Z undo that little delete I've just made, sometimes you get this sort of effect happening where you see there's no, I've just uh, re-added that tell dub delay, I've just un undone that deletion. I can't see the name of it, but there's a quick way around this. All we do is just resize the track. You see the, uh, the, the text pops up again to tell you what that device is. So let's take a look at how we can do that little hack. And I can't take credit for this. I did, in fact, learn this from another certified trainer. But I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. So new finder window. I'm going to go to my home folder on the Mac. From the drop down menu where it says go, I need to select the library folder that's contained within uh, my home folder. Now, in the most recent version of OS X, the library is actually a hidden folder but you can access it from this Go drop-down menu by holding Option or Alt on the Mac. You see, if I hold that key down, the little library icon pops up in this menu. So I'm just going to select that, and now you can see I've accessed this hidden library folder within my home folder. So after we've done that, what we need to do is go to Preferences, Ableton, select the version of Live that you're using, and within this preference folder, what we need to do is create something called the options.txt file. So the quickest and easiest way to do this is just to right click on, uh, you see you've already got a .txt file, something called the log. So I'm just going to duplicate that, that file. Just rename it options.txt. Notice that I've given the options a capital letter. I'm going to open that new file that I've just created. I'm going to delete everything that's in there. And now we're ready to do our little hack. Now it needs to be a plain text document, like I say. So just make sure that um, options.txt is a plain text document, which it should be if you have duplicated the log.txt file. Now there are loads of little hacks that you can do to modify the behavior of Ableton Live. Um, like I said, I picked this one up from um, another certified trainer, but there's actually uh, loads on the Ableton website, ableton.com, that you can add to this options.txt file, like I say, to modify the behavior of Ableton Live in some way. So it's worth checking out. If you like this little hack, it's worth checking out ableton.com to see what other little bits and pieces you can add to this file to uh, make your life a bit easier. So all we need to add to this file is dash show device slots. Notice there's no spaces and the first letter of each word is capitalized. So I'm just going to hit save. So the upshot of this is within Ableton Live's preference folder we've created a new plain text document called options.txt. We've written one line in there called dash show device slots no spaces save that, quit text edit, I'm just going to quit live and reopen it. And if you've done it correctly, then that little button should pop up. There you go. You can see this is my preset um, template, my live set template, and I've already got a drum rack loaded onto one of those uh, one of those tracks. Incidentally, you can resize this area if you need to. It's this little bar here. So 
So that's how creating and modifying an options.txt file allows you to see that device list and hopefully make your life a little bit easier.